who is the guy right now in this class that you would say is the top lead guard that you feel best about? Oh, Lordy. That is really tough. That is really tough for right now. If we're kind of saying like we're investing more in all the buzzy words, if we're investing in upside right now, I guess I would have to say J.D. Davidson. I don't feel great about it. That's not like a, a completely definitive statement. I like for him the ability for him to get paint touches at such a high frequency, which opens up everything else on the floor for him, for his teammates. He's very fast with the ball in his hands. He can make game-changing plays in the last 30 seconds of games, like that game against Houston. He had that huge tip dunk. He had the goaltend that wasn't a goaltend. That's a, another story for another day. But without hesitation, that's like the type of level of athlete that he can be on the basketball court. Now, that said, he has to find a way – to stay fast while slowing down mentally and keeping his processing high. There was a a drive early in that Houston game where he beat his man. He kind of like tapped on the brakes prematurely, then passed opposite, ended up being a turnover. And then some more stuff just out of pick and roll. I I didn't like a lot of the decisions he made against Gonzaga early. The first one, he like pump faked and traveled. The next one, he like kind of sort of tried to feed the post. And the third one is a nicely placed alley for Charles Bidiaco. The jumper, when he's wide open, sometimes looks really good. looks fluid. It looks clean. Other times in his head, he just pauses for a second. He doesn't get it off, and and you don't know kind of where he's at mentally with his jumper. And uh, alongside, and this is a common theme for all the guys we're going to talk about, when I watch Alabama, I feel more comfortable right now, though, with Javon Quinterly with the ball in his hand and him kind of like being the yeah. initiator. And then when J.D. can be on the second side and then it gets late in the shot clock and he can make one of these crazy plays against a shifting defense, I just get nervous when J.D. Davidson kind of like gets moving too much. I I see the gifts. I I see the talent. It's just there's still work to be done in order for him to kind of be solidified in that lottery-ish type range for me. So I would have – I'd have J.D. Davidson number two right Mm -hmm. now among this group, and it won't surprise anyone uh, who is number one if you've been listening to the show for a while, but uh, at least throughout the 2022 process so far. But the the thing that worries me with JD is I don't know how he's going to score right now at the next level. Yep. I don't think he is a particularly comfortable driver. I don't. Anytime, like you go back and you watch the Gonzaga game. Basically, any time that Chet Holmgren rotated over from the weak side, J.D. Davison just like decided to turn away from it. It's not a bad like, decision, though. Like that, no. that one's a business decision. I don't know if we can count it's Chet because I turn away too. <laughs> Who's actually maybe like Jaden Ivy will turn the corner and say like, "Yeah, it's coming, buddy." Like here, we're we're gonna try to dump on you right now. A lot of guys would pass that out. I, I totally agree with your point. Just tough with Chet. Right, but I use that as an example, right? Because Chet is as big as other NBA centers, right? Sure. Like this is this is the real size issue here. Uh, I don't trust JD Davison as a pull up three point shooter. Do you? No, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know if he yeah, he does I, necessarily I'd either. Like some guys yeah, are like no, I agree with shoot that. fifteen times no matter what. Like he he doesn't have that. I think he had six points last night. 10 assists, he was trying to distribute more, but I don't think he was really necessarily looking to shoot off the dribble either. Yeah, and then I think he's much better as a distributor. He's a pretty good distributor out of ball screens right now. He's actually a, mm-hmm. he's a really good distributor out of ball screens, I would say. Uh, the turnovers are an issue. Like, whenever he gets into the lane and he gets deep into the lane, it looks like that little processing ability that you said that he needs to have. Yeah. It looks like it short circuits a little bit. It does. uh, Whenever he gets farther and farther into the lane, like he's good at hitting a kick out shooter uh, from the elbow, right? Like he'll hit that like cross corner kick because Alabama is so good at like teaching those guards, I think to look for that pass. Right. He's a really great athlete. He is someone who really gets out in transition um, he, dr- I think he actually like drives transition play, like in some respect, he is like a really, uh, athletic guard for sure who can do that, but he turns the ball over in crowds. He isn't really a scoring threat in tran or outside of transition right now, or outside of being a spot shooter. Like I would imagine that 
he's averaging what, like nine and a half points right now? Probably three yeah, of those per game. Like 9.6. Yeah, three of those per game come off of a spot three. And then what do we think? Three more of those per game come out in transition. Maybe he gets like a bucket and a half in transition a game. Yeah, and the, the transition thing is weird too because defensively he he's pretty lax away from the ball. He seems disinterested a lot oh, of times. Totally. When he is active, he'll, he'll dive in passing lanes because he wants to get on transition, like you said. But when he yep. misses on that, he's out of play. Then it's five on four. So it's like I like the I like the thought of, of him diving in and being a disruptor. But I also don't want him totally diving out of plays and gambling and giving your team a, a disadvantage down the other end. The same time, we're saying no. he's the best when he's scoring in transition. Like that's how he goes out and does it. So, like, what's the balance there? Of you want him to run, you want him to get steals, you you want him to pressure the ball, but I also don't want him away from the ball, standing straight up and, and kind of looking lost in space. I mean, beat for back doors too. Yeah, no, I I, I would prefer that he stays solid on defense. Like right. uh, I know that uh, I know that there's room to gamble, and I think there is like a middle ground for it but I would prefer that he stays more solid in defense and he's not there yet right now. Yeah. Um, look, I, I've just spent now like probably four minutes like shitting on JD Davison. Like he's an incredible <laughs> athlete I and I think he is like a very real pick and roll passer. But like, to me, this is, this is not a top 10 pick based off of what we've seen so far. No, I don't, I don't think so either. I don't. And, Which and I, I feel like anywhere that I look around the internet, like outside of myself and outside of you, I, I don't I, – I see that's where I see him. Like, that's where I see him ranked. Like, I feel like people are looking at, oh, he's shooting 56% from the field and 36% from three, and he has five assists per game and five rebounds because he's a great athlete. And, you know, we can extrapolate that if he wasn't next to Javon Quinterly that um, he could have a higher usage rate and, like, could average 15 and mm -hmm. seven per game. But – I just don't know that I see that based off of what I've seen on tape so far. And that's, um, that's concerning to me. Like to me, like he looks like a good late first round pick flyer right now. Yeah. I, I currently have 26. It's probably too low. And, and he has played better than that. I've kind of moved the the top 15 or guys around. Uh, but just like sure. scrolling through the names again, a, a, a free agents. I, I don't know where a lot of these guys fall in the, Goran Dragic, Alfred Payton. Uh, the, just, wait, 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 that that's a good name. Like, there's kind of I'm a just, lot of Alfred Payton there. Right. I, I mean, <laughs> look what you got yourself into now. It, there is some of that stuff there. It, it's actually a good comp kind of like by accident. But those are like the actual right. A to B decisions that teams are going to have to make. Do you believe in, in yep. Alfred Payton? You kind of went through this experiment. Or are you willing to do it with J.U. Davison because you think there's more there to him? Yeah, like the, he is a project. Like it's going to take JD Davison some time to work through parts of his game, and I, I don't know. JD Davison's a better shooter than Alfred Payton is. I will say that. Like I, I think there's a world where JD Davison like shoots out of spot situations consistently from the NBA line. Like everything right now in college is from the college line as well. Like there's not really any NBA range there either. And I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit more worried. I'm a little bit more tentative on JD Davison, I guess. Than what uh, I, I will, Davison. I will say this too. We, we talked about this, I think, kind of on our guard preview is that he's from a very small town. He hasn't played a ton of high level basketball. He didn't play a ton of high level high school basketball. Yep. This may also be a kid who just needs time and more reps, and he's never been told to process it because he's always been the the fastest or the biggest jumper or the biggest scorer yep. and get on transition. Yep. And those gambles have always worked. And now he's got to readjust, recalibrate to what it looks like in college and he'll have to do the same thing for the pro. So I also don't want to completely write him off because it, it's, it's early. It, it's young in his career. And, and this is a new level of basketball for him. Yeah, no, I think that you're hundred percent right. And, and I'll be honest. Like I think the shooting off of the catch is a little bit ahead of where I thought it was. I, yeah, I just better. don't, yeah, I don't see him anywhere near being ready yet off the bounce. And I don't really love the way that he processes once he gets two feet in the paint. Um, this It's just, and then the defense, like you said, is not necessarily awesome. So right. to me, like this is, this is a phenomenal elite level athlete, even by NBA standards in terms of explosiveness, in my opinion. Uh, 
that is going to take some time. And to me, like that guy is worth a late first round pick flyer. Now, 